Third, thanks for joining me for the Outlaw Pulpit right here on Sanctuary International Matrix. And we're going to have a little fun today. We're going to reminisce a little bit and um, certainly uh, feel free to comment as uh, this video is posted and uh, let us know what you think um, because... <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I'd love to know what you think of these things. And I want to share 10, 10 scary trends that uh, 90s kids had to live through in youth group. Okay, now I was a, not only was I a youth in the early part of the 90s, but I was a youth pastor in the later part of the 90s. And uh, these trends are quite, quite scary. And I'm sharing these with you because I have a point. I have something I want to get to. Um, regarding uh, who we are in, in Christ and uh, where what what the Bible has to say about this stuff, but here here are ten scary trends for those of you that lived through the '90s youth group era, and this probably could trip trickle back over into the '80s as well. But number ten is wearing Christian parody T-shirts. Okay, like. I, I remember having this one. It was it, it was a playoff of the uh, Harley Davidson logo, but it said Heavenly Divine Son. Um, do you remember uh, Lord's Gym showed Jesus bench pressing the cross? It said His pain, your gain, um, stuff like that. So yeah, you might remember that T-shirt. Um, number nine is trust falls in youth group where you would stand up on the stage or a chair and you'd fall backwards and people would catch you. Um, that didn't always happen. <laughs> a lot of kids would end up going home hurt and stuff, but uh, you know, number eight disturbing trend in um, 90s youth groups was liking Christian movies because they were Christian. Ah. <sighs> I could do a whole outlaw pulpit on this one because quite honestly, I don't like Christian movies. Not, a, a, not as a whole. There are a couple that I kind of like, but um, you know, just because uh, um, a B class or a C class actor is in it, like Kirk Cameron or somebody like that, it doesn't mean I'm going to enjoy it. Um, it just, it just doesn't. So, um, yeah, but liking Christian movies because they were Christian movies. Um, number seven, <laughs> this is a funny list. It says, when you try trying to stop cussing by wearing the WWJD bracelet. <laughs> that, that was a trend, too, in the 90s. Um, then uh, later on in the 90s, there was the book uh, by Joshua Harris, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. And so youth groups, and I was a youth pastor during this time. Youth groups would uh, talk about this and all of the all of that and the proper way to court, not date, and uh, it was just um, something else. And funny enough, I was working in the Christian bookstore market when that book came out, and I decided not to stock it front and center. I put it in the back shelves, and people could find it if they wanted because I was single at the time, and I said I am not kissing, dating goodbye um, because I hope to find the right one. Oddly enough. Um, the author of that book, Joshua Harris, he walked away from the faith just a couple years ago. Look it up on Instagram. Interesting. Um, number five, calling DC Talk the best band ever. <laughs> I love that one. Where in the ninth in the nineties, uh, Jesus Freak came out, and everybody thought this was what good music is all about. It's really not, uh, to be honest with you. Um, my my fond memories would be of Tourniquet. Um, Certainly Vengeance Rising and Shout and uh, even more modern bands today, uh, certainly like Red and The Chariot and stuff would be considered way better than DC Talk. But when you're a youth group kid, it's all you got because mom and dad approve it. So here we go. Number four, viewing lack of popularity as persecution. You know, when no one liked our chaotic DC Talk lip sync in high school, we thought it was uh, because of the Christian message, so you thought it was persecution. No, no, quite honestly, you're a dork. <laughs> and so that's why people uh, didn't um, really uh, perhaps like some other people because they were like over the top thinking they were cool and all of that. And so uh, because you weren't popular, you viewed it as persecution and then you would tell your youth group about it and everything and you got to maybe preach a message and that that was it. It was, uh, it was interesting. Uh, number three, believing self-help sermons equals the gospel. You know, every youth group, every year, um, some youth groups would break attendance records for, um, you know, uh, True Love Waits series. Um, a four-week series on talking about 
the birds and the bees and everything. But looking back on it, uh, a lot of youth pastors handled each of the weeks surprisingly well. They really did. But um, it was uh, really something that came down to, uh, it. don't know if it helped or not. So here we go. Number two, believing pop songs could re- be redeemed by changing the lyrics. There were Christian groups that did that all the time. I won't say any names, but to take a popular song and change the lyrics to Christian stuff. And then number one, thinking Christian haunted houses were a good idea. Um, They were good for shock value, but uh, ongoing stuff, ongoing relationships with Jesus Christ. Uh, you actually, you can look up statistics online. They're pretty low because uh, actually it was Dave Reaver who started the Hell House. Um, and that's the real name of a Christian haunted house, the Hell House. Um, they, they really, they could draw a crowd. Absolutely, they could draw a crowd. And they were well done, but there was not much fruit to it. Here's what I'm getting at, okay, with that aside. Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when we fall into trends, and we all enjoy trends, you know, it's, it, you know, one way or another, we're going to follow some kind of trend and, um, you know, and that's okay. But we have to be careful when we change the gospel, change the uh, belief system that we have to fit these trends and become zealous in these ways. Because when we do that, then we're not really f- rooted and stable in who we are and what we believe. And, um, I, you know, I found that all the time when I worked in Christian bookstores back in the 90s. People would come in and uh, they'd want to buy a book by Chuck Swindoll. Great, good author, solid, okay? But then they'd want to come in and buy a book by Kenneth Copeland, okay? Then they'd come in and they'd buy a, a book by Charles Spurgeon. They don't, those two don't even live in the same country um and like not figuratively but just theologically then they'd come in and buy a book by Marilyn Hickey and then they'd come in and you see where I'm going they don't know what they believe and so they were just reading all over the place when the bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever it means the message be stable in what you have if you like Johnny Cash shirts go ahead and wear them if that's the trend you like cool but when it affects our theology when it affects what we believe in Jesus Christ, stay rooted in what you know and who you are because if we're swayed all over the place with that, well, then quite honestly, it's no wonder a lot of us are in theological panic when it comes to crushing moments and difficult situations in our life. So I hope that was a little uh, thought for you this um, afternoon and I hope that you benefited from it. Feel free to comment. Um, email me outlawpulpit at gmail.com. I will get back to you just as soon as I can. Have a great day.